Hello everyone, this is Bloodbane here. We're going to be going over reactor engineering. So, this one's kinda all over the place, but I'll see what I can do. Alright, let's start with uh, basic reactors. You have pistons, injectors, and auxiliary slots. Your pistons, you're going to have two kinds. You're also going to have two kinds of injectors. I only have one kind. So we're going to start with a normal injector and then we're going to do one of the special uh, normal pistons. Uh, this is going to give us our combined stats over here on the bottom right. And you'll see that if I take this normal uh, piston off and I put in this lower pressure piston, is going to give us more energy, but less maximum temperature. All right, so let's go with more energy for now. And we're going to go over to auxiliary slots. Now, the overcharger is something I don't really use at all. I'm, it increases output by 5% and makes it so, uh, if your reactor shuts down, it turns back on slower. I haven't really found a good use for this, so I don't use it. Um, I have been told that I should use two resistance multipliers. And what the resistance does is it makes it harder to get heat from one source or the other. So let's say I go for this inner resistance. This is going to make it so it's harder for me to overheat from uh, firing weapons and things like that. Uh, it's going to increase that resistance. So I have a resi internal resistance of 32. If I remove one of these multipliers and I put another inner resistance, it's actually lower because of the multiplier. The multiplier only goes from bottom to top. It doesn't go top to bottom, as far as I can tell. So if you're, if you're going to be fighting in a relatively cool environment, um, maybe have your resistance going internal. You can also do external resistance by replacing these with the external resistance uh, auxiliaries. It's gonna end up being the same. One thing that does not help you, however, though, is going half and half. And this took me a long time to learn, is having a resistance of zero that means you have no resistance either way. So you might as well go heavy on one end or the other. <clears throat> now we also have nuclear reactors. I'll bring out a fresh one. These ones operate a little different. Actually, I'll bring out one I already used. Okay. Um, the auxiliary slots do the exact same stuff. Okay, resistance multipliers. Ooh, we figured it out. Same as last one. Now, this one also has a safety. All of them need a safety. As far as I can tell, there's only one kind of safety. So there's no need to worry about the safety. It just needs one. And then you have the kernels. Um, as far as I can tell, um, the kernels don't do, like there's not a huge difference between these weird teal color ones and the red ones, except the red ones make it so you have more energy output slightly. But they don't like it if there's not at least one of the teal ones. The uh, gray ones, they help with something. 
But I have found that the, uh, for me personally, the optimal setup is uh, three grays and two of the teals and three of the reds. Now, the stats themselves uh, might look like it favor at least three teals because of the energy output, but the problem I run into with that setup is that the reactor temperature increases relatively fast and I overheat a lot but if I have two or three of the grays on there it's nearly not impossible but nearly impossible to overheat my reactor and yes I have about half as much available power but you know to me it's worth it so that's something you're gonna have to decide on your own um, that's about as much input I have on these. Um, and then you have this final one, which is a thermal nuclear reactor. And I don't have enough magnets to show this. But let, let me grab one of my mechs that I have one. Get down there, Joey. We're gonna rip the reactor off from this booger. All right, give me your reactor. I'll deal with that mess in the next tutorial. <laughs> All right. So we have this guy. Now you have two different kinds of uh, solenoids you can throw on this booger. There's this teal one and then this orange-ish one. The teal one seems to give more power output but reduces the amount of uh, cooling that your reactor is going to have. That's the only difference I can really tell myself. The orange one's better at cooling down, and the teal one's better at giving you power. The magnet setup, this thing has left me mostly clueless, but I have figured out that this lineup right here seems to work mostly well for me. I'm sure there's some kind of other optimization you can do. I haven't figured it out, but this one's pretty simple. Uh, vertical, horizontal, weird wavy. Vertical, horizontal, weird wavy. <laughs> That's about as much as I got for this one. Uh, the, this one's awesome. Uh, I haven't had much issues running it like this. And I haven't had much more need for more power output and stuff. So, yeah, uh, it's worked pretty well just like this. Anyways, I hope that's helped. And, oh, one more thing. Uh, this bottom left has your reactor temp. And you can test your reactor. Uh, temp fluctuations with these little levers after you ignite your reactor and uh, like four is a high stress load two is a kind of high and so on and so forth one is the lowest uh, test load four is the highest you can turn them all on at once if you want to to see how it goes under like super hard stress. All right, I think that's it. I think that's everything I know. Anyways, I hope that helps guys. Uh, this has been Bloodbin. I'll see you in the next one.